Hello friends, this video on neat reproduction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 1. Select the wrong statement. Isogametes are similar in structure, function and behavior. So if you remember ISO, the term ISO itself means same. So the gametes which are similar in structure and function, they are isogametes. So this statement is correct. And isogametes differ either in structure, function and behavior. Yes, that is also correct. And ISO, that means heterogametes or the gametes which are different. So this statement is correct. This statement is also correct. But we have to find out the wrong statement. Let's go to the third one. In oomycetes, female gamete is smaller and motile, while male gamete is larger and non-motile. So what is oomycetes? So these are fungus like eukaryotic organisms which are also known as water molds. Now here uh, reproduction can happen by two ways. Like normally in oomycetes, these are also known as water molds. So how reproduction happens? So it can happen, the sexual reproduction can happen with the help of sexual spores. Asexual reproduction happens with the help of asexual spores. So the sexual spores are called oospores and the asexual spores are called zoospores. So these are the two modes of reproduction in case of oomycetes. Now let us talk about the gametes. So as far as uh, the type of fertilization that oomycetes undergo, so the oomycetes undergo oogamy. So they are oogamous. <clears throat> and what happens in oogamy? Oogamy is a type of, it, it is a form of an isogamy where the male gamete is motile and small. Whereas the female gamete is non-motile and large right so this these are the specifications these are this is with regards to the reproduction in case of oomycetes so here it says female gamete is smaller and motile which is exactly the opposite so this statement is incorrect so this is wrong let's look at the fourth option chlamydomonas exhibits isogamy and an isogamy and fucus shows oogamy yes that is also correct because in chlamydomonas we have seen that they also have isogametes at the same time they also have an isogametes so which would be our correct option the third one because this statement is wrong question number two product of sexual reproduction generally generates Longer viability of seeds, prolonged dormancy, new genetic combination leading to variation, large biomass. So what happens? How is sexual reproduction different from asexual reproduction? So in sexual reproduction, the, the most uh, unique thing is that here new traits are introduced. Because in sexual reproduction, as you know, that the new organisms which are formed, they are not exact copy of the parents. So they are a blend of both the parents, like some characters from one parent, some from the other. And at the same time, there are some new traits as well. So new genetic combination leading to variation would be the best option. Question number three, which one of the following is correctly matched? Onion, bulb, ginger, sucker, chlamydomonas conidia, yeast, zoospores. Now what are these? Bulb, sucker, conidia, zoospores, what are these? So as far as bulb, sucker are concerned, they are nothing but modifications of different parts of the plants like modification of stem, modification of root, so these kind of things. So let's see which one is correctly matched. So let's talk about onion. So in case of onion, the stem modification is called bulb. So this is correctly matched. Now what about ginger? So if you talk about ginger, here the modification is known as rhizome. So the purpose of rhizome is food storage. So ginger is not sucker, ginger is rhizome. What about Chlamydomonas? In case of Chlamydomonas, Conidia is for Penicillium. So Penicillium is an example of organism which uh, reproduces asexually with the help of Conidiophores. So you, Conidia is for Penicillium, but Chlamydomonas, they reproduce asexually by zoospores.
so this is also not the correct match for yeast yeast do not uh, asexually reproduce by zoospores zoospores is for chlamydomonas whereas for yeast it is budding therefore this is also not, not the right option so the correct option is onion for bulb Question number four. The eyes of the potato tuber are flower birds, shoot birds, axillary birds or root birds. So what is tuber? Tuber is nothing but a modification of stem in potato. That is an underground stem. Normally stem is above the ground. But in case of potato, the stem is modified that in such a way that it is underground. And this underground modification of stem is called tuber. So the eyes of the potato that we see, they are nothing but they are axillary birds. Now what are axillary birds? So axillary birds are those which have potential to form shoots because from those birds new shoots arise. Now if possible just observe this at your home. Let's say that this is a potato and you have eyes of the potato like dot like structures on the uh, surface of the potato. You would have seen that right. Now keep that potato for a couple of days in your home. And what do you see? You see shoots arising from those dots. So what are those things? They are nothing but shoots. So these dots are the axillary birds. So they can give rise to shoots. Now these shoots can either be vegetative shoots like stem and branches or they could be reproductive shoots like flower. So they could be anything but yes, these birds have the ability to give rise to shoots. That is why they are axillary birds. Question number five, in which one pair both the plants can be vegetatively propagated by leaf species, agave and calonch, bryophyllum and calonco, asparagus and bryophyllum, chrysanthemum and agave. So one is for sure and that is bryophyllum. So bryophyllum is one of the most common examples where adventitious birds are present in the leaves and new plants arise from these birds. So this is a type of vegetative propagation in bryophyllum. So bryophyllum is one example of vegetative propagation by leaf and the other example is kalank. So bryophyllum and kalanko are the two examples where vegetative propagation happen by leaves. So B will be the right option. Question number six, a population of genetically identical individuals obtained from asexual reproduction is, now in asexual reproduction, the uh, peculiarity is this, that the new organism which is formed is exactly identical to the parent. For example, you talk about budding, what happens? A bud grows, bud uh, matures, separates out, but the bud is exactly identical to the parent. So these identical organisms are called clones so b is the right option because callus is something else what is callus callus is uh, nothing but a mass of undifferentiated parenchymatous cells in fact uh, a living plant tissue when placed in artificial growing medium under favorable conditions that then a callus is formed so callus is uh, just a mass of cells which are undifferentiated you when you talk about dim so this is a local population that can actively interbreed with one another and they can also share a distinct gene pool so that's deemed aggregate is normally a group of individuals so here clone is the right option question number seven new banana plants develop from rhizome sucker stolone or seed now bananas are vegetatively propagated by suckers which develop from birds on the underground rhizome. So therefore the right option would be sucker. So here there might be a confusion for a lot of students like you might feel that bananas also have rhizome and they also have sucker. So which would be the right option? So read the question carefully. New banana plants develop from, so from where do they directly develop? So they actually develop from they are propagated basically the vegetative propagation happens through suckers but these suckers develop from birds which are present on the underground rhizome so in case sucker would have not been an option in that case rhizome would have been the best option but since sucker is also there so the plants develop from the suckers and these suckers they develop from the birds on underground rhizome 
so what's rhizome in a banana plant so the banana plant's true stem is rhizome so rhizomes are characterized by horizontal underground growth production of roots from multiple nodes production of clonal plants so that's how rhizomes are characterized whereas if you talk about the sucker so sucker is like a lateral shoot that develops from the rhizome and emerges close to the parent plant so the sucker develops a leafy shoot and adventitious roots before separating from the mother plant so new banana plants would develop from the sucker but the sucker they actually develop from buds on underground rhizome so you can say that bananas are vegetatively propagated by means of suckers which develop from buds on the underground rhizome thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you